After nearly a decade of testing NinjaTrader 8 from beta 4 in 2016 to today, I've seen traders stumble on the same nine configuration mistakes. Stick around as I walk you through each one so that your NinjaTrader fires off on all cylinders. So number one, NinjaTrader 8 lets you load past data by specifying a number of days by default. By default, it's five rather than a fixed bar count number. Now market session lengths vary. A five day load on the ES might be 5,000 bars, but on Forex it could be 25,000 bars, causing inconsistencies in performance. But not only that, loading up five days on a one minute chart might not even be necessary, where loading up a five days on a four hour chart is just not enough. So what you end up getting is excessive data fetches, slow chart loading, and increased memory usage. So how to fix it, right click on your chart, go down to data series, and you're gonna be looking for low data based on, and what you wanna do is switch this to two bar count and enter in your desired number. I find 1500 to be a good number to basically start with, whether or not you're working with tick charts or if you're working with a four hour chart. Number two would be installing NinjaTrader on some sort of a sync drive system. Now, what I mean by that is installing NinjaTrader on top of OneDrive or Dropbox or Google Drive. I've seen it all. OneDrive seems to be the most common. In fact, if you install our XABCD performance tool, it will detect whether or not your system is using it on OneDrive. Now, this is important because sync services can lock files mid-write. They can corrupt your workspace files. They can throw file and use errors. You can get unexpected delays because real-time quotes and those sort of real-time operations cannot happen when they're on the sync system because files are locked. So these are very important to make sure that you actually get rid of these sort of sync systems. So you want to uninstall OneDrive, you want to uninstall NT8, you need to reinstall it when OneDrive is no longer on your system and set everything back up again. It's a big pain, but follow this article that we have here on installing OneDrive and setting things up correctly and it will save you a huge headache number three time zone misalignment so go into tools and then go into settings now here's why it matters nt8's internal chart time does not match your broker server time by default or your local time zone now this matters because any sort of a misalignment in session means that chart bars session templates or automated orders trigger at wrong times this has often caused people confusion over order fills and missed opportunities so how do you correct it you go underneath tools options settings you want to look down here at where your time zone is and make sure that this is set to your broker's time zone you can actually verify in a live quote timestamp against your broker's platform if you wanted to just to be sure so number four not enabling your backup reminders so what do i mean by that disconnect from everything in your connections and then go underneath tools and go into export and then backup file down here you'll see a reminder you can have yourself reminded on every friday or whatever day of the month you want uh, you can have this done automatically leaving this feature off is never going to have you back up your files i can tell you that so uh, you want to make sure that you have your backups done a crash a hardware failure a bad indicator import can erase months of custom work template design workspace design Whatever it is, you need to make sure that you have a backup. So have your backup reminders done. I've seen this save a lot of people. Number five is overloading your charts with too many indicators. Look, placing 10 indicators on a single chart where you probably are using multiple, multiple charts and then you're multiplying that, it should be obvious that each indicator does use CPU cycles and too many will cause you chart lag, stutter, or even application freezes in fast markets. So you wanna make sure that you're only gonna use the indicators that you actually use on your chart. And maybe you might wanna use a lot of template switching in order to get indicators there that you might not need all the time but you want to preview and just stuff like that so just make sure that you only regularly have indicators on your chart that you actually need number six is misconfiguration of historical data providers so when you go into tools and then settings you're going to see this market data option and you're going to look at the top two we have a preferred connections for historical and a preferred connections for real time now failing to assign instruments historical feeds correctly so for instance you might be looking at uh, cryptocurrency instead of using uh, coinbases you have 
uh, ninja trader as a historical data provider. Um, I mean, obviously why it matters, uh, charts may show gaps. You might have mismatched candles or incomplete history, uh, you know, compromising all your analysis and backtesting that you do. So you want to make sure that you go in here and you actually set it to what you intend it to be. Um, interactive brokers is another one where, you know, you have a lot of limits on how many API requests you can do. You might decide to get your historical data from somewhere else, but your real time might be from your broker. So lots of different options that you can explore, but just make sure that you have this set up correctly for your intended use. Number seven, leaving calculate on each tick enabled unnecessarily. Now this is almost done by everyone. Uh, right click on your chart, go to indicators. This is gonna have a big important uh, performance boost for you. Find and go through all your indicators and look at which ones need to be having a calculation done on every tick or if there's a better option. So what I mean by that, go back down to here and you will see uh, you can go underneath your setup. You have calculate, it says on each tick. This is for every indicator, you're gonna see this. Now, uh, this is our price line indicator here. You go to our site, xabcdtrading.com, xabcdtrading.com, and get our free price line indicator. Does a whole bunch of cool things, and um, one of the things that you need it to do is draw a line across your screen. Now, if the tick price change, or if a tick goes by but the price never changes, we don't need to waste the calculation redraw it. The line would not move anyway. So we only need this line to move every time the price changes, not every time we have a tick. So this is gonna give us a, a big important uh, performance improvement to have this set instead of on each tick, to have it set on, on price change. And it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have it only done on the bar close, because it wouldn't move frequent enough, it wouldn't move with current price. So we want to have it on price change, but we don't want to have it on each tick. So we're going to press apply and press OK, and we'll be much better off for it. Number eight is the improper use of templates and workspaces. So um, obviously you want to save from clutter. You don't want to have a whole bunch of stuff that you're not going to use, but oftentimes these workspaces uh, could be running in the background, like this gray one here is running in the background. And if it points or references to an indicator that maybe you just installed temporarily or you're not using any again, uh, you'll be getting a whole bunch of errors or unexpected defaults disrupting your trading workflow on your day to day. So you want to make sure that you're not going to keep stuff that you that you're never going to use make sure that you clean it up take the time maybe once a month to go through these things and make sure that everything's clean actually having them named by purpose so maybe a five minute scalp or a daily trend type workflow um, you know obviously these templates are going to need to be used in order to to be beneficial to you so make sure that you only have what you actually need Number nine, installing old unverified free indicator packs. I've seen people do this all the time. Maybe the company doesn't exist anymore. Maybe it has existed, but it's not being updating their, their old source code. So basically they're poorly written indicators and they're conflicting with a lot of core files because they end up overwriting your newer NTA files with really, really old ones and it crashes your NTA or it generates incorrect um, errors and all this other stuff. So you want to make sure that if you're going to do anything like this, that you at least vet the code that you're trying to install in your NT8 in the sandbox environment first. You want to make sure that you back up your entire NT8 folder before importing anything. And you only want to install one of these at a time before you install the next one and test for stability. So I would advise you just, there's gotta be a way to get around installing some of these things. It's just not worth the risk. I wouldn't do it. I've seen uh, all these indicator packs. I don't know one that has been maintained its code. And uh, so therefore I would uh, make sure that you're only installing things that are constantly being updated. Now you might see a few tools on our screen today that you might want and there are quite a few that are free. So I'm gonna show you the free ones. We have our Priceline tool that you can see at current price in the top right. We have our lag time detection as well as our CPU uses, all our system performance stuff. This is another free tool. And then along the left hand side of the screen you have our news indicator that uh, maps in news events on your chart too. And then you can get those uh, news events, uh, the titles of those on the screen when you click the line. So all of these are free and get them at our site, xabcdtrading.com.